All right, so now we're going to talk about what's at the center of Greek culture, and that is the polis. Uh, you might have heard the word polis before. Uh, in the United States, many cities have polis in their names. Like, I'm from Minneapolis. Uh, we have Indianapolis. Polis is just a word meaning large city. And so we know because of geography that Greece divided into many different large city-states. So let's define what a polis is, what its characteristics are, and also how it ended up developing. So please write this down. First off, what is a polis? Well, a polis is basically the exact same thing as a city-state. In Greece, they just happen to call it a polis. So remember, we've talked about the city-states in Mesopotamia. We talked about city-states in Egypt. And now, basically, we have the same thing here in Greece. They just happen to call it a polis. A polis, remember, is basically a very strong, independent city-state. And each one of these city-states has their own independent government, own economy, and own taxes. So they are not really connected to each other. Now, we refer to Greece as like a whole only because they have similar ethnicity. They have the same religion, they believe in the same gods, they speak the same language, but they are actually very different. And there's hundreds of poli, or there's hundreds of city-states all throughout Greece. But remember, because of geography, they're very hard to ever unify into a big empire. And that was because almost 75% is covered in mountains, and also it's a whole bunch of little islands. And so because of this, they're very isolated from each other, and it's very hard to unify them. Please write this down, the characteristics of a city-state. Every single city-state, first off, had their own patron god. So remember we talked about one of the impacts of religion is the fact that uh, with geography, they were so isolated from each other that they each kind of developed their own gods. Then as they started to trade and interact with each other, they started to trade stories about their gods, and they kind of combined their gods into this big polytheistic religion. But even though every single Greek believed in the same gods, each city-state believed that they had one patron god, meaning one most important god that was there to protect them. So, for instance, the city-state or polis of Athens believed the goddess Athena was their god. Uh, in Sparta, it was, I believe, Dionysus. And so they all believed in all the gods, but they all believed that each one had one specific god that was looking over them. Also, every single polis had an acropolis. And so they would find the highest part of their polis, and so like a really big hill or mountain, and they would build um, a military fort. They would also put many re important religious things up on top of the Acropolis. And that was because if it's up on a hill, it's very difficult to attack, so it's safer. And the last thing every single city-state or polis had is something called an agora. An agora is Greek for a marketplace or a trading center. Now remember, Greece, because of their geography, did not have very good agriculture. Therefore, they relied on trade. So every single city-state had a trading center so that they could gather the goods for the different city-states and trade and make money uh, for themselves. All right, so this is maybe what a typical city-state would look like. You can see the Acropolis up here. So this is where the military and important religious shrines were. Down here in the center would have been the Agora, so the marketplace, and then very simple uh, homes throughout. So you can see it's not like a massive city, but it is still a developed civilization. All right, so this is very important to remember. Please write this down. What did the polis do for the Greek citizens? Well, because they were so isolated from each other, and because it was a lack of resources, they are always fighting each other, they had to develop a very strong sense of loyalty to their polis. This was their country. Even though it's roughly the size of a city, this city was their country, and they're very patriotic and very loyal. But also, they very much valued their independence, and again, this is why it was very difficult to unify them. Because basically you have hundreds of different countries, 
and they all believe that they're independent and should be ruled independently. And so it's always very hard to try to join them together. All right, and this is where the Olympic Games comes in. So the Olympic Games were developed because of all these different polis trying to prove that they were stronger than their neighboring polis throughout Greece. So they're there in order to show their strength and bravery in order to prove that their city-state was the strongest and was the most brave. And they would do this through athletic competitions. They would do it every four years, and if there were any wars or fighting between the different poli, then they would stop the wars, go and do the games, and then when the games were over, go back to their wars and continue fighting. Kind of like the Olympics today. It's this time of peace where everybody drops all the drama. And all of the events were war-related. So again, it was, a ability to sh it was a time to show the strength and military power of your polis, but it was through friendly competition. So there would be things like boxing, running, javelin throwing, um, wrestling, and yeah, it was all done naked. There's many different theories why, mostly probably because for safety, because when you're wearing clothing, uh, no, actually, that's a really bad theory. I really don't know why they're not wearing clothing, but everything was done naked. We do know that. All right, so the very first polis uh, developed on the island of Crete. So let's get a timeline going here. So you need to know that the very first Greek civilization was around the year 2000 BC. Now to put this in a time frame, this is after the pyramids had been built in Egypt. So you can see Greece is not as ancient as Egypt or Mesopotamia. It's a little newer of a civilization. And the first civilizations within Greece developed here on the largest island called Crete. And there are two different groups of people. The first one was the Minoans, and they were the very first large civilization, and we believe they are very advanced. We know that they had indoor plumbing and sewage, big palaces, and then they eventually fell because of an earthquake, and another civilization developed there called the Mycenaeans, but these were the first Greeks on the island of Crete. And then, and this is your last note, uh, eventually, around 600 BC, we had two different city-states that were very different from each other develop and become the most powerful of all the hundreds of different polis that existed. And those are the two that you already know about, Athens and Sparta. They're both located very near each other, which is one of the reasons why they got into a lot of wars and competed because of how close they were. They were both located on this peninsula called the Peloponnesian Peninsula. And this is going to set up a series of wars that we're going to be talking about between Athens and Sparta. But right now, I just want you to know that by 600 BC, these two are the most important and strong city-states. All right, guys, so let's recap the information you should have gotten from this video lecture. First, you need to know what a polis is, what the characteristics of a polis are, uh, what kinds of things existed in every single polis, also why they developed, and uh, what were some of the first poli. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions.